If you play games online, you'll know about lag, or at least you'll have felt the effects. A missed shot that looks dead on, a ball that abruptly changes direction mid-air, running into a room only to be dragged backwards as if you'd never entered. These aren't anything paranormal, they're artefacts of the systems that developers use to make playing games with people in the next country feel just as good as playing with someone on the other end of the sofa. Well, at least most of the time. Now, in this video, sponsored by Network Acceleration Specialist Subspace, we're going to explore some of the reasons that lag happens, what other network problems can manifest, and even share a few things that you can do on your end to make the situation better. We're also going to look at the rest of the pipeline between your computer and the game server, which can make the difference between a responsive, lag-free experience and, well, a stuttery, unplayable mess. So, how come lag even exists in the first place? Why is it still a problem when today's computers are so powerful, where broadband internet is everywhere, and when game developers have had literally decades to tackle the problem? Well, from a developer's perspective, implementing even basic multiplayer is actually a seriously challenging undertaking. You need to take inputs from many different players simultaneously, beam that information to some kind of central server many times per second, and then you need to reproduce the effects of those inputs on each and every player PC. The game state needs to be synchronized perfectly with the bare minimum of delay, no matter whether you're dealing with players on the same local network or players connecting, well, from another continent. Ideally, it's got to feel fair as well. No one player should have a significant advantage over the others, like appearing without warning when they're lagging too much. So you'll need a way to compensate for players with lag and actually waiting for the server to tell you the results of your own inputs will make the game feel sluggish. So you'll probably need to show the effects of each player's inputs on their own PC immediately. Then smooth over any differences between the player's PC and the server in a way that isn't obvious to the player. Oh, and we can't know what other players are doing until the server has told us so we need to show other players in the match as they were in the past. You also need to dissuade cheating by ensuring that each player's PC doesn't have access to too much information and without allowing the player's PC to make decisions about what has actually happened in the game, like whether a shot has hit or how much health the player has. It's all complicated enough with just two players. So imagine what it's like for a game with 10, 20, or even hundreds of players on the same server, as you get in a modern Battle Royale title. With all its facets, implementing good multiplayer is actually one of the most challenging parts of game development, even for veteran developers. So it's no surprise that problems sometimes manifest. Of course, that doesn't make these disruptions any less annoying. And the faster paced and more competitive the game, the more that a laggy experience can really hinder your enjoyment. As well as out and out lag, there are all sorts of other network issues that can occur. Rubber banding, where the game world pulls you back to where you were a few seconds ago. Taking damage just after you run behind cover, your own shots not registering, or even just losing connection to the game entirely. So what causes these issues? Now, typically there are three network phenomena at play, each of which have a different effect on the packets of information, full of your inputs and the game states that are traveling between your PC and the server. So first of all, lag. That means that packets of information are taking too long to reach the server and return to the player PC. Jitter means that packets aren't being sent and received at a steady rate. It's kind of like bad frame pacing. Your ping might be around 20 milliseconds one second, 90 milliseconds the next, then back to 30 milliseconds around that. Packet loss means that packets don't reach their destination at all, causing that information to need to be resent 
and potentially causing weird behavior in game. Of course, you might experience just one of these issues or all three together, and this can be pretty maddening. For the player, if you don't feel in control of the experience, if you feel that your performance is held back by networking problems, that's going to make you far more likely to quit the game and never look back. By extension, for the developer, the publisher, well, that's going to translate into lower audiences, potentially a big hit to stuff like, say, microtransaction revenue. And if the game's free to play, it puts the entire existence of the title into doubt. It's particularly brutal for games with competitive aspirations, as any repeating issues can make players and tournament organizers unwilling to play competitively until the issues are fixed. So why do these disruptions occur? There are three main categories. First, mile issues caused by your PC, home network and internet connection. Mid-mile issues caused by the root data travels between your ISP and the game server. And last mile issues caused by the game server. Now, normally the first mile and last mile cause the least amount of delay, around one millisecond in our example. And that middle step has the most delay because it includes all of the geographical distance between your computer and the server. Let's start with the stuff that you can actually control, issues caused by your PC and home network. Just like your game's performance being limited by the weakest component in your system, like your CPU or graphics card, your network connection relies on many elements to work properly. How packets are sent and received can be affected by the settings of the game, your PC's network hardware and its drivers, your operating system and its settings. There are also physical considerations, such as how your PC is connected to your router, what router you have and how it's configured, and of course the internet connection you've chosen from your internet service provider. So there may be one or several areas you can potentially change to improve network performance. The most important for gaming is to switch from wireless to wired internet, which can reduce latency, jitter and packet loss significantly. Beyond this, it may be worth investigating routers with more configurable firmware or just upgrading the speed of your internet connection, especially in households where your connection is used by several people who may be streaming video, downloading files and performing bandwidth heavy tasks all at the same time. Ideally, your router will be able to prioritize latency critical tasks like gaming and video conferencing over stuff like streaming video. And finally, it's useful to ensure that your PC and its drivers are up to date. You've disabled any apps that use a significant amount of CPU or network bandwidth in the background and any network specific game settings. Well, make sure they're set correctly. Beyond this, we're entering the area where you don't have much control over what happens as the data packets your PC sends go out onto the wider internet. First, your packet is handled by your local ISP, but after a hop or two, it'll be traveling to the fiber backbones that connect cities and countries to one another. Here, the route that the packet takes isn't necessarily the fastest one, and there's no guarantee that a packet could even make its way to its final destination. Remember that the forerunner to the internet was developed by part of the US Department of Defense and designed to work in the face of nuclear war. So it emphasizes deliverability over speed. Routes also change over time as individual links are oversaturated or damaged. So you may find that your connection to a certain server can be speedy and reliable one day but then it's a total mess the next. So what can game developers do to optimize this part of multiplayer gaming? Well, geographical distance will affect ping. So developers can open new game servers that are in underserved regions of their player base. This will reduce latency for those players and decrease the chance of a single link between the player and the server slowing down or failing completely. Of course, running servers everywhere might not be easy, especially for a smaller company with limited resources and won't solve all issues. Another idea is instead of relying on the public internet to pass packets from the player to the server, packets can be routed through specific private fiber routes that the game developer or its partners can rent. Now, this is expensive. 
but using dedicated lanes means that you're less affected by the busy periods in the evening when video streaming services and other high bandwidth applications would normally result in higher pings and of course worse reliability. Having this sort of control over routing also opens up some interesting possibilities for esports where qualifiers and other important matches are still played online. You could adjust the routing and choose a server location such that two teams have an identical ping to a server even if one of them is geographically closer ensuring fairness. Speaking of servers, we should talk about the last mile of the chain, game servers. We've assumed so far that we're dealing with players all connecting to the same dedicated server to play a match, as this often provides the best experience. The game developers or their partners can ensure each server has sufficient hardware and a blindingly fast internet connection. But there are other options too. Client hosting is when one player in a game also acts as the server. This is a good way for game developers to minimize their costs, but the experience of everyone in the match is really dependent on the quality of that one player's connection. So if they're on Wi-Fi or face connection issues, the other players will deal with lag, jitter and packet loss. The nominated host also has zero latency to the server, giving them a tremendous competitive advantage. So not ideal for competitive games. Of course, if that host leaves, then another host has to be found, which interrupts play for everyone for a few seconds during what's known as host migration. Another option is peer-to-peer -peer networking, where each player connects to each other player directly. There may be a player host that's nominally in charge handling the initial connections. So host migration, that can still be an issue. And this also opens up the possibility that players will have a significantly different experience facing some opponents compared to others in the same game state. Two players in the same region will see their opponent's actions quickly, while those that are far apart will face significant delays between actions and results. Instead of being able to adjust to your own internet conditions, maybe leading your shots more if you're playing with a high ping, you'll have to adjust on a per opponent basis. And that could be quite challenging. Therefore, it's not too common to see this kind of server architecture outside of one versus one fighting games. Although exceptions like Brawlhalla shown here do exist. As well as different player server architectures, game developers need to optimize the packets that are being sent to and from each player and choose how often the game world is updated. The more frequently this happens, the higher the tick rate, the more quickly processing needs to be completed on the player's PC and the server. But generally, the more responsive the game becomes. Some games operate with a variable tick rate, such as Battle Royales, where the tick rate is raised throughout the game as players are eliminated. Or Counter-Strike, where third-party matchmaking and eSports matches are carried out at 128 ticks per second, compared to the game's built-in matchmaking, which operates at 64 ticks. Finally, matchmaking is a critical part of the multiplayer experience. If you're automatically placing players in a game together, as a game developer, you need to consider factors like ping, skill level, the number of players in parties, and each player's chosen maps and modes. Each new factor reduces the size of the matchmaking pool substantially, which in turn lengthens the amount of time you'll need to wait for a game on average. Here, even a small amount of clever engineering or improved routing can really help as this can increase the number of players in your matchmaking pool and therefore allow you to give a better experience without making wait times too long. So those are the basics of the various causes of lag and other poor aspects of network performance. As a player, you have some options that can vastly improve the quality of your experience. So it's well worth spending some time with if you play multiplayer games regularly. Gaming on a reliable network connection can make things much more fun and yes, improve your performance too. We've also seen some of the options available to game developers too and what impact these can have on the experience. You can also ask your ISP or the developer of your favorite game if you're playing on subspace. 
So this isn't a topic we often cover, but it's been an interesting diversion from our usual focus on single player performance. For more information on lag and what you can do to combat it, I'd recommend checking out creators like Battle Nonsense. Uh, he has basically dedicated his whole channel to testing network issues in different games and how different technologies affect them. We've linked some other interesting netcode videos and articles in the video description below if you want to learn more. But that's all from me for now. I hope you enjoyed the lowdown and if you did, well, liking, subscribing, it's all good. As is ringing the bell for instant notifications whenever we release new video content. But that's it, that's the video. Thanks for watching and supporting Digital Foundry.